Hey, I'm Joe McNamee. I teach people how to buy and sell real estate for a profit without risking their funds or their reputation. Okay, so this one here, this actually is a mobile home. Um, and this one here is on, uh, I think it's about two acres that this property is. Really, really, really pretty property. So <clears throat> this one's a little bit different. Um, this was a couple that couldn't handle walking up and down steps anymore. There's a little bit of steps. You see there's a staircase here. There's only like three, three or four steps to get up into the house. But both of them had hip replacement surgery. They had uh, lots of um, physical issues that are making it to where they couldn't handle this house anymore. And they were going to move to another town in Georgia closer to some relatives that could help them um, be independent, uh, continue to be independent. Well, <clears throat> the house was free and clear, but it's not a very big mobile home. It's a, it's a smaller mobile home. It's still a three bedroom, two bath, but it's not the most desirable size um, house. Now the land size is perfect, it's great. So <clears throat> I wanted to see what my market had to say and I told them it's gonna be based on what my market has to say as to what I can pay them per month. Uh, but they agreed that I could pay them as little as $300 a month with them seller financing the property to me. So in our marketing, I found people willing to pay you know, more than that. And so I said that I would, pay, I would be able to pay you $350 a month even though I only had to pay $300. So every month for many, many years, I have been paying them $350 a month with a seller finance, no interest deal. Now, by the way, their house also was worth a whole lot less than what they owed on it. So when I took it over, I took it over for uh, more than what they're, they're owed on it. But in the conventional wisdom world, that matters. In this real estate investing world, and if you really knew what you're doing in the conventional world, you would realize it doesn't matter either. The worst way of determining value is to get an appraisal on your property. That's the worst way to determine how much it's worth. But in the conventional wisdom world, a lot of people think that's what you should be doing. Okay, so back to the story. So this property, um, we took it over and we put an end buyer in place who was in it for years. Um, and they were able to uh, qualify through us for us to allow them to buy it with us converting the deed. So we, we set it up where they could buy it through us and uh, convert the deed into their name. Now, shortly down the road, they landed a job. He, he refabricates jets. And so he landed a job in another state doing the same thing, but making almost twice the money. So he was trying to decide whether he was going to leave his family here, let them stay in the house, and he was just going to go and work it. Well, finally, uh, and he did that for a little while, but finally they decided to move the whole family. They had kids and everything, and the kids were growing up without that. So they moved um, away, and they said to us, uh, listen, we're just going to hand the, half the property back over to you. We don't want to mess with it anymore. Uh, we're going to go to another state. And I said, okay, that's fine. So uh, the first thing I looked at doing was just buying it right back from them uh, for them to convert the deed so I would be buying it subject to. Well, there was a problem that came in. There was a tax lien that was an income tax lien that had followed them. So the lien got put on the property. Well, you have to understand that the the first lender on this, uh, it was in the first lender's, there's a lien in the, in the first lender's name, uh, which is the seller, and then I'm the second lien holder because there's a balance above what we're getting for the seller um, on this, so I've got a second mortgage on it, and then the tax lien is in third position. So um, I said to them, I said, the tax lien is about $1,500. Now you got your choice. You can pay this tax lien off which takes it off the property and then I can take it back over or you can just not and then I'll foreclose on the property which wipes the tax lien off the property. Now they're still responsible for that $1,500 but it takes the lien off of the property which is all I care about is the real estate. They chose to um, just let me do the foreclosure instead of them paying off the tax lien. Some reason or other they felt they didn't owe the money or whatever and I don't want to get into that, that's, that's up to them. So anyway, we went through the foreclosure for me to take control of the property. It cost about $1,200, so I could have easily given them the $1,500 for them to pay the tax lien, but they didn't want to do that. Um, so I spent $1,200 taking this property back, 
to get the tax lien off of it, and then we put our new buyers in place who've been in there for a couple of years now. But we've made tons and tons of money, way, 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 way more than the $1,200 that we spent to remove that tax lien. So don't let that scare you. It's no big deal. Okay?